That's nice. Can I see the inside? Yeah, of course. Sick. I gotta save that for the interview, my friend. Fucking hell, man. We'll do Put it. On the dress. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a black polo okay. as well. Keep it classic. Keep it classic. <laughs> Thank you. Sunny Cal style. There you go. So, Israel, I wanted to ask you you've been flying back and forth from Thanks. Australasia to America. How tired are you right now? Fresh. I don't look tired. I don't feel tired. No. Um, yeah, I mean, this is nothing new to me. I've done this like throughout my whole fight career and back and forth, ups and downs, smiles and frowns. And the, yeah, I keep it fresh. Is it a weird part of this industry that as soon as you get a fight booked, everyone wants to talk about the fight after the fight you've got booked? It feels like you've just been put against Kelvin and now everyone's like, what about Rob? Yeah, I, I understand that because I do look at the future. You know, I look like, but that's like before fight week. During fight week, I stay focused on the task at hand because I realize if I don't get this done this weekend, then all my plans that I've set up, I have to go back like a step. So I don't want to do that. I want to keep moving forward. So that's why right now all my energy, all my focus is 100% on Kelvin. Is, do you have to, is that something you have to actually take notice of? Like, okay, I'm thinking too far ahead and you have to pull yourself back in. Do you actually have those moments? I've, I've done it like so long. I've done this for so long. So it's like, it's easy. It's like riding a bike. So, you know, during training camps, I, I see things three steps ahead. But then when it comes to like fight week, the closer it gets, I just hone in on that one guy I have to get rid of. So I'm doing that. It's funny, right? Because you're pretty fresh in the UFC, and yet you're actually an experienced hand at all this stuff. So it's funny you talk to you like you're almost a rookie on the way up, but it, yeah. you have the the composure of a guy who's done this too many times almost. Yeah, I'm like I'm like a veteran. I've been around for a long time, so a lot of people who haven't done their research, they just think, oh, he just got to the UFC. I'm just doing the most. That's all. So let's talk about that one guy, Mr. Gastelum. As a vertically challenged man myself, and you're a taller guy, what's it? Challenge. It can be an advantage. Well, that, right. this, is, this is what I was going to ask you. Do you just look at a guy who's like shorter, like Kelvin, and be like, "Oh, this is going to be easy. My reach is too long," or do you find the potential kinks in your own armor when you're fighting a guy like that? Not really in my one during the fight. I look at all that kind of stuff during the training camp, but. I do have an advantage in the reach and not just arms, legs. Uh, I, um, it's about how you use it, you know? I can have all the reach in the world, and shit if you can use it, you know? So I know how to use my reach very well. I've used it my whole career. And what he does, I've seen so many times. His power, he knows how to use it as well. And he's kind of fallen in love with it here. Yeah, and he, I'm, I'm pretty sure he's gonna go back to wrestling school. He's going back to wrestling school for this fight. If he was smart, but he'll find out eventually why everyone else who tries uh, to wrestle against me fails. Because on paper, he's a better wrestler than me, but paper can't fight paper. Is there a bit of an excitement almost for you to finally show off that stuff? Because so far your fights have been striking dominant. So are you almost like, oh, I'd love him to come and try and take me down so I can sort of stand there and be like, see? Exactly, I've done it my whole UFC career. Um, everyone's tried to take me down at some point. I stuffed the takedown, put their head, boom, put my balls on the back of their head, <laughs> sprawl, flat out. And then I get back up and fuck him up. So I feel this would be the same thing this fight. If not, if he can manage to keep me down, then he can see what my guard game's like. And let's, I mean, it's a bit of a generic question, but when you think of the finish, do you see him being durable enough to handle you throughout the five rounds? Or do you think oh, he's just going to crumble? I noticed in Embedded, you said he had a bit of a soft body and your coach was saying, listen, it's going to take an accumulation of damage. So is that the mindset going in, like hit him multiple times and so on? All I do, I've said this uh, since the debut, all I do, I just want to touch these guys. Good touching. I just want to touch them, you know, in the right spots. Soft body, the legs, inside the leg, outside the leg, on the calf, um, on the head, on the chin, behind the head, allegedly. But, um, yeah, just touch them enough times and they'll fall. And, this, you, see, you know, Brian, Brian uh, what's his name? Fuck. Brian Ortega versus uh, Max Holloway. Mm -hmm. I feel like, that's yeah, that's a fight. And you see, these Mexicans, they're tough. And he's got a big head, but it's an easy target. And fuck, I can beat it up. Appreciate you, man. Easy ass.